Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 9th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Checking out the last 48 hours of imagery brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. 304 angstroms. We do have a few sunspots, but no major solar flares or CMEs shot out towards us. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, we do have some sunspot regions and as well a couple flaring active sunspots. But definitely the one on the right hand side, we're going to be giving a closer look at that as it is a very large one. Looking at outgoing imagery here, a couple plasma filaments shooting away from our sun as well more dancing around the northern hemisphere on the west side three darkened lines on the right hand side those are more plasma filaments and wrapped around a sunspot region having a look here multi-spectrum showing the last 48 hours of events small cme shot out from that region there backside of the sun has been very active as I told you earlier there was quite a backside eruption, but not going to affect Earth. But this large plasma filament in the southern hemisphere, snapping a small CME. No major coronal holes to talk about. We can always see that here in a different light, but there are no major coronal holes turning in. Having a look here at our sunspot regions, big sunspot region turning in here and very active at that so heads up and then as well watch on the back side of the sun there's a lot of energy coming through and this is the backside solar flare i was telling you about this happened on the fifth created a full halo cme but not in an earth-facing direction this was directed right at a venus Having a look here, Lasco 3, and as well Lasco 2, showing that large backside solar blast. Very big one. Thank God it was not in an earth facing fashion, because that would have been a huge space weather event for us. Just look at the ripple effect here from a part of the explosion on the left-hand side there. Full halo CME from a large backside eruption. Most likely an X-flare because it was huge. I want to thank everybody for your patience. There's been no videos and as well, no live stream. Laptop has crashed and or been hacked. All I've got is a blank screen. So thanks everybody for tuning in tonight and as well for checking out the update video I put out earlier today. Much love. Solar X-ray flux remains in B range. No major solar flares to talk about. Geomagnetic activity is going down as our solar winds are starting to go down as well, sitting at 400 kilometers per second after being up over 600, almost 700 kilometers per second about three or four days ago. Looking at ISPA Space Prediction Spiral, showing the latest event, taking off again on the backhand side of our sun, just missing Venus. Looking at the Schumann Resonance for today, an 85-hour blackout, but a power of 26, quality of 8.2, amplitude of power 27. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as it hasn't been very busy sitting at just over 200 earthquakes in the past 24 hours according to usgs but the largest earthquake the last 24 hours was south america 5.4 earthquake attico peru 49 kilometer depth and the deep pretty deep earthquake through the region 4.6 209 san antonio de cobros south sandwich islands seeing a 5.2 
as well north of Ascension Island, 5.1 and a 4.8 today. Iceland has been pretty active as well. I'll just put in here the last three days because yet I haven't given you an update. And again, I appreciate your patience and much love to you all for checking out the Daily Do. 5.5 there to report in Greece. Activity today through the Indian Plate, Afghanistan, 4.4, Hindu Kush, and as well a 4.6 here in Zhejiang, China. But the last couple days, look at this through Indonesia, Sumatra. It's been very busy. 5.6 there, Bengkulu, Indonesia. As well, 5.2 there, Papua New Guinea today. We had a few pretty deep earthquakes, 580 kilometer depth. And that was the deepest past 48 hours. Earthquakes all the way down the trench to New Zealand, North Island, New Zealand. Kermadec Islands 5.4 through there today. Notice all those deep penetrating earthquakes. Heads up, Solomon Islands over to Papua New Guinea. As well, Japan is seeing a 4.1 here. Deep, 406 earthquake, 406 kilometer. Izu Islands. Eastern Russia there, 5.2. Seismicity moving through Alaska, four mile road, largest being 3.7. Across the North American plate, there's been some interesting activity up into the Pacific Northwest, where they reported a 3.7 here in La Falle, Washington, 23 kilometer depth. And that's pretty much right smack dab in the middle of all of those fires and all the pressure that is releasing across the Pacific Northwest. 4.2 notable there yesterday, Pahala, Hawaii. If you haven't checked out the volcano activity report, please do, giving you an update on all the active and erupting volcanoes around the world. Quick glance here at the last seven days for earthquakes across the world, largest being the 6.8 earthquake here, 6.6, .6, on a day when we are being penetrated by 666 kilometer per second solar winds as well. North the Ascension Islands, sizable 6.8 the last seven days. So heads up, North American plate, there seems to be a lot of activity and a lot of pressure across the Pacific Northwest. Active hazards, we have 215 active hazards across the world, and a lot of them are fires across South America and as well West Coast, United States, from California right up to B.C., and even still some small fires through Jasper. Tropical Storm Earl is still alive and in a very organized fashion. It looks like it may be a Category 3 or 4 when it hits Newfoundland in a few days. Heads up. Tropical Storm K is set to bring quite a bit of moisture. One of the closest hurricanes to the California coastline in quite some time. That came right up through the Gulf of California. Frost being reported in Manitoba and Camrose already. That's pretty, well, not pretty early. It's early. And then here showing all the fires across the West Coast. Princeton, British Columbia, Little Wet, British Columbia, as well Revelstoke, Kimberley. But notable earthquakes here through Idaho. Very concerning. A lot of pressure through that area. Salmon Mountains. We could have a volcano getting ready to blow its top here on the west coast. There's a lot of pressure and a lot of heat. Fires in Wyoming and as well California northern and southern. Tropical Storm K may bring some relief to that, but it looks like it's going to be jetting out into the Pacific through the short range forecast here. Across the rest of the world, we do have Typhoon Muf Muifa, who was alive about two or three days ago, just updated 38 minutes ago, and it will be heading into parts of Taiwan and then eastern China and the South China Sea. Fires through Russia, many fires through Central Africa, and even more fires through South America. 
Look at all these wildfire icons across the countries of South America. Give you a quick image here of the satellite imagery across West Coast, Pacific Northwest. Many fires through Idaho, Washington, B.C., Oregon, North and South California. Heads up, stay tuned, stay safe, and thoughts and prayers to everybody being affected already by these fires. And as well, Tropical Storm K, as it has brought quite a storm surge, which was forecasted here with daily events worldwide. Now let's get to weather here, brought to you by Venture Sky and daily events worldwide. Cool pressure, long trough sweeping across the nation. Going to bring some unsettled weather Tuesday into Wednesday. And then ushering up into the Atlantic coast. Some moisture building in the central United States as that line moves across the nation. Low pressure system coming in through Alberta is going to really cool things down. A lot of moisture coming in off the coastline into Alaska as well. Now watch for the temperature here forecast for the next few days as by next Wednesday to Thursday that's when you're going to see things really cool down across Alberta or sorry uh, Friday into Saturday so next weekend is pretty much when that cool down will come three degrees in the foothills but no major systems affecting pretty dry throughout North America right now let's get back to the systems through Central America, Tropical Storm K, as I said, will be fizzling out over the next 48 hours and jetting straight southwest, apparently, and then maybe back to the coastline. Who knows? But it definitely needs to bring some more moisture to those drought-stricken regions. Watching a Gulf Storm here develop in the long range, and as well another tropical system, Southern Mexico, Watching that develop in the long range. Overlooking Africa. No major systems affecting you. Yeah, but the major concern will be through Mexico as this system moves through and develops. And as well, another system there through Jamaica. And then we have a tropical, tropical typhoon Muifa, who is forecast to just scathe the coastline of Taiwan and then head up into the South China Sea. Same direction as pretty much Himamnor came to, but watch because it may join forces here with another tropical system coming in behind it. It's going to be a very interesting forecast here, trying to transition into autumn and winter as we did not have very many Pacific storms nor Atlantic. So it could be a nasty outro to the summer months. Quick look here at the Southern Hemisphere, mainly Australia. Giving you a quick look at the moisture that will be moving in by quite possibly Thursday, Friday for Eastern parts. Other than that, not much to talk about. Thanks for watching today. This has been Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. Much love, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Prayers for humanity. Thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by these wildfires today.